वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु वाहे sessions or 14 sessions to get to Kartapur and each session was about 15 minutes long so the moon mantra is really really deep uh, and as I say in Gurbani often the same word can have two different meanings depending upon the context it's very deep uh, like life as well you can say some one thing one day and you can re- come back upon it another day and see another deeper message so obviously in talking about Gurbani um, I'm going to end up making some mistakes or I'll give some viewpoints that are mine or not something which is as deep as it should be. So my mistake, my apologies in advance for that. What we can do is try and go through really slowly and try to understand what this moon mantra is and why did Gunnar Dev Ji give that right at the beginning of Guru Granth Ji. And uh, it doesn't just come right at the beginning. Throughout uh, the whole of the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, you will get um, passages which start with the moon mantra. Uh, now just to clarify, um, up to Nanak also be such, is actually three mantras in one. So just to go to the, just give you the kind of background of the talk, then we'll go into some history and then we'll come back into the talk itself. Um, traditionally, there's five mantras in uh, within the Sikh kind of faith. So the first one uh, is called the Bij mantra. Now, amongst the the Kulini Yoga uh, environment, normally the Satnam is called the Bij mantra. But in the traditional schools where I've learned from, they would say that Ik O Wang Ka is the is the beach mantra. So that's the first thing it starts off with. So you've got the beach mantra. The whole thing is called the um, Mool mantra. And then also from Ik O Wang Ka to Gud Prasad is called the Maha mantra. Now if you know what Maha means, Maha means wow, great, the great mantra. Um, and I'll just go into these these three things and why they're so important. Obviously. Everywhere you see Sikhism, you'll see the Ik on God. <laughs> it's kind of synonymous with, uh, with Sikh, Sikhi or Gunanak. Uh, and in fact, the story goes that, bless you, when it came to Gunan Devji getting married, uh, he actually wrote this down on a piece of paper. He refused to get married around the fire, and they got married around Ik on God. Yeah? It's an interesting uh, Ik on God, because it starts with a number. Isn't it? it doesn't start with a word, it starts with actually a number. And from my understanding of all the texts uh, out there, uh, the holy texts if you want to call them, it's the only one that starts with a number. Uh, um, then up to Gur Prasad, <coughs> again it's a Mahamantra. Uh, and this Mahamantra is the one that is repeated throughout Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Uh, at the beginning of lots of Shabbas uh, or hymns, you will get this Mahamantra uh, repeated. Um, and it's important to understand the history of that. And then you've got this word, Jab. 
and the job of a complete in a little, little while, it has two different meanings. And then you've got something which is Adi Satch Juga Adi Satch Happy Satch Nanak Hosi Pi Satch And that is a salok, like a small salok, like you have at the end of Japji Sahib, Salok Pavan Guru Pani Pita. And this salok uh, comes up, except for example, in Sukhani Sahib, the salok is Adi Satch Juga Adi Satch Happy Satch Nanak Hosi Pi Satch. Instead of B, it becomes Pe. A little bit changed, but this salok comes in Sukhani Sahib as well. So you've got these, the Moon Mantra itself consists of the um, Maha Mantra up to Good Prasad, then Jab, and then the Salok. Now, um, to go into the background of this is um, Gunad Dev Ji, when he came on, was born into the earth. And he was born in 1469. Um, so you see a t-shirt brand called 1469 out there as well. That's what it refers to. Um, now, in 1469, he was born into a family which was pretty much a Hindu family uh, and everything they did was Hindu but the country was controlled by the Muslims so when he grew up he was first sent to the traditional teacher which was a Pandit the Hindu learned priest he learned from him and the Pandit said to him you know I can't teach you anymore you surpassed me so then he was sent to the other school of thought which was the Maulvi the Muslim uh, priest so he learned from them so as far as we know Guran Deji would be, have been able to read the Quran would have been able to understand it, would have, would have been taught how to read the Bhagavad Gita and the Puranas and the Simritis. Uh, and then he would have basically learned all these two languages, so Sanskrit um, and Persian and, and Arabic. So he would be able to sit down, like we are now, and talk about the Quran to someone. Yeah? Obviously I can't, but they could. So they had all this knowledge when they were growing up, but there was something inside them that wasn't satisfied. <laughs> yeah? They hadn't managed to, with those two traditions, um, achieve what they wanted. So they were looking to achieve something. Um, and they got married off at a, a very normal age at that time, 14, 15. They had house, householders where they had two kids. Uh, and they had gone, like you might do to your, uh, you know, move around, they'd gone to live with their sister um, and her family in a place called Sultanpur. And that place still exists now. So you can go to the exact place where this event, which I'll tell you about now, happened. It still exists. Um, and Sikhs have always lived there. So the Gurdwaras and all those places, they've been around since you know, 500 years ago. Uh, the first kind of foundation. And the foundation stone of Sikhism started there in a place called Sultanpur. Um, basically, Gnan Deji one day, he used to wake up every morning um, and uh, go and have a bath in the river. And when he would have this bath, um, he would then pray on the side. His friend at that time was a guy called Madonna, who was a Muslim. But a Muslim they used to play the uh, rabab, which is a bit like the guitar. It's great that we've got to deep here today. It's a very similar sound. Uh, and then they would go and do their work. And they work as a storeman. So you know like you have the, the, the village store where they have all the food coming in? So they were actually a storeman. They were working away. Um, and there's many stories about their lives, which we can talk about the fact they were working as storeman. But leaving that aside, um, in 1499, so they were about 30 years old, yeah, so you imagine like we see pictures of Gunan Deji always as an old man, right? This happened when they had a nice black beard and they were quite young, yeah, they're 30. So most of the people in this room are probably, you know, I would say medium term will probably be 30, yeah? So they were about our age, if you can say, or maybe younger, uh, or we all remember being 30, you know, I'm only 33 now, so. Um, it feels like yesterday. So, the, so when they had, they had an experience, basically, as history records it, Guruji in his own words, in Gurbani says he was given a job. Now, uh, if you look at the qualities of the ten gurus, they've all got a certain quality attached to them. And what they say is that Gunan Deji's biggest quality was humility. He had, they say, he had like if the world, of the compassion, if the humility in the world could be divided into ten pieces, they say Gunan Deji had nine out of those ten of all the humility available. And it's he's supposed to be the home of humility. So in his own words, he says, I was given a job. Uh, because I was, a, I was an idiot singing songs, I got given a job. Right. But what we know from Sikh history is that, because um, the third guru, his nephew, was somebody called Pai Gurdas. And he lived with the third guru, the fourth guru, the fifth guru, and the sixth guru. And he became one of the most prominent Sikhs, Pai Gurdas. And Gurdas means a servant of the guru. And Pai Gurdas's writings are around now. And he's given, the, the, he's a master historian and a, and a poet. 
and his writings are the key to Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So everything we know about Guru Nanak Dev Ji really comes from Bhai Gurdas Ji and from Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And Bhai Gurdas Ji uh, says that he achieved, he was brought into the, into the presence of God. So in 1699, Guru Nanak Dev Ji goes and has a shower, in, in a, a bath in the river, and he doesn't come out. He goes in and he disappears. So some people say three days, uh, by many things, eight to nine days, he disappears. Now everybody's concerned because people used to like Nanak. He was quite a sweet guy, you know. He was he was a uh, uh, he had an important job in the village. I uh, being the storeman, head, head of the store, not the storeman as we understand, like a shop. Like if there was only one store in the shop in the whole village, he was the guy that headed it up. So he's gone missing. His sister lives in the, in the village. You know, her husband lives in the village. His kids are there. His, excuse me, his wife is there. It's very concerning. Where's this guy gone? He went to the river and disappeared. He died. It wasn't a fast flowing river. And he disappears and people start mourning him. As in the old days, he used to mourn people to hit themselves and all this stuff and cry and wail well to God. So they were doing this and then lo and behold, Nadeji he comes back out of the river. Uh, and he says, um, he says, the first words are, there is no Hindu, there is no Muslim. So his first words, na koi Hindu, no Muslim. Now, to understand how important that statement is, it, it relates back to the breach month of Ik Om God. But to important how, at that time, imagine society was divided into two camps: the Hindus, the oppressed, yeah, but also caste-ridden. Within the Hindu culture, you have caste, which meant you couldn't change your caste. It's not like nowadays, earn some money, and then you know you're the newly rich, the new rich, and then you're no, no longer part of that uh, the lower caste class. It's not class. It's caste. You can't change your caste. And not only could you not change your caste, your caste meant you had a job. And you couldn't change your job. So from birth, you were trying to do one job and one job only. That's the only job you would ever do. It's very different to what we understand nowadays as class. If you were a, a son of a leather worker, you were going to be a leather worker. And if you ever tried to do a different job, you'd get beaten up. And even to this day, right now, in India, in villages in India, if you try to change your job, as in your caste, you get beaten up. So the caste system has not gone away in India. And it was very stratified back then. To, for, him, for him to stand up and say, there is no Hindu, there is no Muslim, having been schooled in both these, these two traditions was a blasphemy and he could have been killed. But because they liked Nanak, they said, what, what are you on about Nanak? What are you coming out with? And then he said that he'd been to the court of God and he'd been given the Mahamantra, Ikkum God, to good result. So stories like this, Gunan Devji basically within this time, he goes into the water and disappears. He then gets called into what we call the, the, the throne, uh, or let's say the, the um, darbar is like a good word for it. Um, like a king has a court, yeah? And in that court there's like courtesans and people singing and you know, the, all the important people there. And then there's a throne. And on that throne there's a king sitting, right? And he's conducting the business. So he was brought into that court like a person brought in. And he was given, at that point, he was given Amrit to drink. Like we drink Amrit now. He was given Amrit from Waheguru in a cup. He drank it up and then he was given this mantra. And the conversation goes like this. They said, Nanak, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm just praying to you. He goes, Nanak, go out there and spread the name. And the Guru Nanak says, how can I spread the name? I'm not a Guru. He goes, oh, how can I become a, a guru and teach people when I haven't got a guru myself? And traditionally, in India, you became a guru when somebody else who was the guru made you a guru. Right? So you had to have had a guru to become a guru. The Guru Nadev didn't have a guru. So, what he said, how can I become a guru when I haven't got the guru? And then he was told, the Shabbat will be your guru. The Shabbat we mean this word, the message. The message will be your guru. It's effectively, why guru will be your guru. And nowadays even, the Shabbat is our Guru. For the six, they bow to Shabbat. The same Guru that Guru Ji had, we have the same Guru, the Shabbat. And in Gurbani it says, Shabbat Guru, Surt Tonu Chela. My Surt, my consciousness is, is, the, is the servant, and the Shabbat is the Guru. You see? So even now there's somebody called Shabbat Guru saying, it's a beautiful name because that is the actual Guru, the Guru is the Shabbat. Um, now, what he was given then was up to Guru Prasad from Waheguru direct. So this is the Shabbat that made him the Guru because it, be, he, it became his Guru. And it starts off with Ik 
Oankar. It's a really, really deep word, this Ikunkar, because you know some people translate it to mean there is one God. And that's a very uh, very simplistic translation. It's not wrong, because there is only one God. There's nothing wrong with saying that. But what we what we mean by God is also a confused concept because the word God instantly has evokes an image in our head. Yeah? That image may not be the right image to have in our head when we're talking about the ik. So the first word is ik, and that's the letter one. So it starts off with the letter one. Um, and ik, to give one translation of ik or God, it means that the one, the one who made everything, the one who is the only one, there is, there is only one. I tell you that, that if you watch the Highlanders, the wife watches very well. There is, only, there is only one. Yeah? So, so everything came from this one, right? So it's, it's, it explains that everything is one, and everything has come from the one. So this one, ik, imagine just a singular beam, and oh, is a sound current. This is the word that Mara says made the world. This om is actually the sound. So it's very similar to the Hindu sound of om. But it isn't om, it's om. There's a little ung in there. And as this ung happened, om, this is the whole world was made. Creation expanded out. So it's a, it's a process it's describing. And akar, the word akar in Punjabi means form. Yeah? So the world as we see it now, this creation expanded from the world. So if you say, where is Vaheguru? Vaheguru, we're inside Vaheguru. Vaheguru isn't away from the world. We actually are inside Vaheguru right now because the Ik expanded out and made the creation. And the Ik is all, the creation is inside that Ik. And also the Ik is separate from it. If you're going to blow your mind a little bit. The Ik, <laughs> ik is, the creation is inside the Ik and it's outside the Ik. It's everywhere, it's within it, and it's outside of it. So we can't understand the ik. Yeah? But the ik is where it came from. Now I was thinking about this the other day. Guru Deji's message is singular. What I mean by that is, he was always asked, the world is duality. Everywhere he went, people said the world is duality. There's good and bad, you know, there's positive energy, negative energy. And Guru Deji's message was, there is not duality, there's only one. So that's why the ik is really important, because to understand Sikhi, is to understand how do you transcend duality and how do you become one with the one and just one and nothing else but the one. So this is the message. So the ik, they say, you know, even if you look at the molecular, if you study physics, at the molecular level, there's no neutrons, protons and electrons. And if you can imagine, everything in the whole world is made from these three things. The electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons are negatively charged and obviously protons are positively charged. So actually there's, that duality exists at the very molecular level. And I was thinking about this, imagine even water, we drink water and it's beautiful, yeah? And when you're thirsty, there's nothing better than a glass of water going down your throat and you feel so happy and you're blessed with life, water is life giving. But water is two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. It's not like a gas, right? But it's actually just two gases. And all those <coughs> gases are, are more electrons and neutrons floating around and it looks like something. So if you look at the molecular level, the whole world is a dream. It's only made up of two things, or three things. Neutrons, protons and electrons. And yet we think we are real. Yeah? So, so what we say, and even those can merge back into the ik, the one. And there's a, if you study physics even further, it says that everything means electrons and protons Electrons and protons are far away from each other. They're not close to each other. They're floating away from each other like the Earth is floating from the Sun. Very, very far away. That's how far the orbit of the electron is. And if you were to take away the gaps, for a second, if you thought, take away the gaps between the protons uh, and the electrons, you know how much, how much real matter there is in the world, in the whole galaxy? It's about a sugar cube's worth. So the whole of the expansion we see now is only about a sugar cubes worth of actual matter or proton neutrons, electrons. So you can blow your mind a little bit to understand like what ik means, yeah? Ik means it's all just one. Everything has come from the one. And this ik is where we are inside, effectively. As far as we're concerned, when you meditate, you aren't connecting to anything which is away from you. 
it's connecting with what's already inside you and what's all around you. So if we can just, um, when we come to talk about the Wahi Guru Mantra, we'll talk about the analogy of understanding the Wahi Guru being around us and do a meditation which is based upon not connecting to something which is from here to here, but something which we're actually absorbed, totally inside right now. Um, so the ik, with the sound of om, made everything a god. And that becomes ik om god. It's a process. The one with the sound made everything. Right? Whatever you see. And whatever you see has to go back to the one. So it's not a one way process. Mara says that it comes out and it will go back in. Right? So it's like a breath. Literally the whole world is almost like a breath inside Wahi Guru. It goes up and it goes back. And that's where we're going to end up. And also our journey as a human being is also to come from the ik and go back to the ik. So when we look at this as a, as a me message for the metaphysical world and what we can see out there, at a spiritual level, we've come from the ik. And with that sound inside us, the breath that was given to us, like our body being like some kind of um, cave, Within that cave, the breath of life was given to us by Waiguru with a sound as well, a breath. Yeah? And then, when we finally merge back in, we have to, either this life or the next life, we have to go back to that one, then that life will become back to the ik. So it's like a two-way process, ik on God, we're going to go back. So imagine like, we could talk about ik on God for a long time. But the same light then, the con what's, the, what's the consequences of the understanding ik on God, that we come from this one? One of the consequences is that there is no religion. Yeah? But it, kill, it kills religion. Right? Because pre previously, when Gurnanaji came out and he said, there is no Muslim, there is no Hindu, that's what means ik. Yeah? That there is no religion. All you've got is a fallacy that there is religion. So it looks funny because, you know, I look quite religious, yeah? Mm. Right? <laughs> On the average person in the street would look at me and think, that is definitely part of a religion. But imagine, this is a religion which doesn't believe in religion, yeah, if you can get, get it that way, right? Because there's only one creator, so therefore there's only one light manifest everywhere. And that matter, one light manifest everywhere means that even though we are fooled by skin colour and by language, by all these things, those things aren't real, the soul is the only thing that is real. And that one made us all, so there's no religion. So therefore, if you imagine religion now, if you wipe out the idea of religion and just think the one, and there was enlightened people, that's it. There's only the one and enlightened people, and there is no religion for a second. Just imagine the world without the religion. Just imagine all the people. Yeah, there is no religion. There's only people that had access to that truth of the one, the if. And all we're trying to do is take as much of that truth as we can and find a way back to that ik. So that's the whole of life is that as well. It's that we've come out, we want to go back to that ik. And that, so the divine light in all is the ik. Sabameh jod, jod the soy. That's the way it says in, in the Kitan Soila. That in everybody, there is that light. And that light is not their light. It's that light. It's, that, it's the one's light. So we, as a concept, don't exist. You see what I mean? Yeah? We, we tell ourselves that we exist, but what Maharaj is telling us that we don't actually exist, only the one exists. So we fool ourselves into believing that we are real. And the problem, the biggest problem that we're told is not our lust, our pride, our greed, our attachment and all, all those things, is that beneath these five is a deeper enemy and that enemy is Homi. And this word Homi comes up, Ho means I and Me means I. It's I, I. Yeah? Yeah, well, but, but the word homi, it comes in Japanese, right? Because nana kukume je buje, ta homi kehe na kui. And that homi will not speak if we understand the way that the hukum, the world, the, the rules of the world, so to speak, yeah? That's what that line means. We talk about it tomorrow in the meaning of Japanese, But homi in Gurbani, the word ho is used to say ho vari ho varane. I am a sacrifice. Ho. So ho means me. And then me also means me in Punjabi. So, home means I, I. It's a sense that we exist. When you say I exist, you not, not acknowledge that the Creator exists and that we're, we're actually the Creator inside. We don't actually exist. When we say we're the Creator, it's the wrong way to look at it. We don't exist. The Creator is the only thing that exists. 
So some people start getting a bit too, you know, you get, get they confused by saying the life God is inside you. They start thinking that they're God. Right? You have a divine aspect inside us. The divine aspect has nothing to do with us. It's from the divine. It's of the divine. We're, we're actually the mistake, as in the sense, not the mistake, we're actually the, the construct that doesn't exist. The real concept that exists is the one. So, go on. That sounds like there's a separation. Only, uh, okay, I'll explain it to you. Uh, I was going to use an analogy a minute ago, so that's perfect that you brought this up. The analogy that we're told is something like this. You have an ocean, and you take a glass from the ocean, and you look at it. Right? Now the glass, it looks like a glass of water, and the ocean looks like an ocean of water. Yeah? But what's inside them? It's just the ick. Now what if the glass started thinking, I'm by myself, I'm alone, and I've never been part of any ocean? It's not true, is it? Yeah? The glass has come from the ocean, and the glass is only as real as the glass itself is. What's inside it is the ocean. And now imagine now that glass hasn't come out of the ocean, but it's just been, it's a little plastic bubble, you know, or like a bubble inside the water itself. And it starts thinking it's separate from the ocean. But it's a bubble. And when it pops, it goes back into the ocean. That's the analogy we're going to use when we meditate upon it. Imagine that, that's how, how real we are, Guru saying, that that bubble is how real we are. And when it pops, it's going to go back into the ocean itself. And where it is inside it anyway. So, it's quite a, so that's, to understand Ikkunkawa is to understand the whole world. And that's why it's called the Bij Mantra, the Seed Mantra. Because with this, if we keep thinking about Ikkunkawa, we will understand that actually we've come from the Ik. And then we can go back to the Ik, just with Ikkunkawa. Because we forget that we are actually real, and the only thing that is, is real is ik, and we are it. And then the we fix it doesn't become real either. And you say I, ik, 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 that's it. One, everything is one. So that's the, that's the deepest philosophy of Sikhi. Another thing that comes out of saying that we are ik, is obviously all the social constructs we have about, not even religion, but caste, and colour, um, and creed, and sex and discriminating against anybody on the base of anything it goes out the window as well you see so the whole of Sikhism if you can understand the philosophy is so deep the rest of what you see in the Gurdwara is kind of like a school to teach you about equality equality is like the fundamental principle that comes out of Ik because if there's nobody who's rich and nobody who's poor there's nobody who is enemy nobody who's a stranger there's nobody who's black or white nobody who's male or female there's only the Ik then we have to base our life, our whole society to change around the ik. And in the Gurdwara, the beautiful thing is, that already exists. It's a cultural model for us to learn from. In a Gurdwara, you can't stop somebody coming in. No matter what they are, you can't stop them coming in. All you ask is, will you please cover your head and wash your hands and feet? And that's it. Yeah? So therefore, your idea that there is a religion doesn't work because everybody's allowed in. Also, in a Gurdwara, you feed everybody. Regardless of who they are, the high or low, they have the same food and the same on the same level. So ik is built into the Gurdwara, the idea of equality. Okay, let's move on. Satnam, it's a second one. It's a very important part, obviously, especially here where people actually greet each other by saying satnam. Yeah. So now, what's satnam? You can sing satnam because obviously in Gurbani it says Japaman satnam, sada satnam. Yeah. But Normally, people don't tend to sing Satnam without the corresponding Wahigu. Yeah? So it's normally that it, it says Satnam. If you look at the Harmanda Sahib, the Golden Temple, this place, if you go back there now, every time they sing, they sing Satnam Sri Waheguru Sahib Ji, Satnam Sri Waheguru Sahib Ji. And it's, it's, it, it refers, so I'll come back to that in a second one. What, it, what that means, but they do it in accordance with Vahiguru. Now, and that comes back to why, what is the meaning of Satnam? Sat um, has been translated as the, tr uh, the true, the true name. Yeah? Now the word true and the word truth are slightly different. Truth is a concept, truth is what is real and what's true, truth. Yeah? And true is a descriptive word used for the truth. If something is true, 
we say it's true because it has the truth inside it, right? And I'm going off into like a bit of a philosophy lesson here, yeah? but when you look at are the such a regard the such a happy such an anakosi be such a, that's referring to that one being such, being true at the beginning of time and then during time and now and afterwards always is true. But the word sat is something slightly different. The word sat means the truth. And we also use sat for sat guru. Yeah? We say sat guru and sat naam. So to understand sat guru is also to understand what is the sat that it's referring to and what is the sat naam. So they're both related because the word sat naam and sat guru can be used interchangeably in many ways. Yeah? Now, the sat is almost independent from the two words, that's why. So look at the sat itself and then understand the naam. What sat refers to is the truth. The truth being what is real and what isn't real. What is permanent and what is impermanent. What is an uh, a illusion and what is the reality behind it. So sat could be the reality or the truth or what is actually real, really real and what isn't faith. And what, like, effectively we're faith, the world is faith. And only Waheguru is the sat. So this is the only truth is the one. So actually the sat is referring to ik. Yeah? Ik or God is the only sat there is. And everything else is where we've got on ourselves. We believe that, that we bought the dream. If you see what I mean? We bought the illusion. Yeah? So the sat is almost independent. That's why later on you see ik or God, sat good prasad being used as an introduction to nearly every Gurbani Shabbat. It's either Ikkongar the Good Prasad or it's Ikkongar the Good Prasad. Because that Ikkongar Good Prasad, Sat Good Prasad, the Sat is also there. And that Sat is separate from Naam now. So the Sat means this is the truth. Ikkongar Sat, the truth, is the truth. And then Naam. And underneath the Naam, the Mamma, is a little line. It's called an Ankur in Punjabi. It refers to through this Sat Naam. So actually, one way of understanding Sat Naam would be to achieve Ik On God, to achieve the oneness with the one that made us and made everything, which is the truth. We need to say the name of the truth. Naam means name. So meditation upon the name is the way to the truth. So the name of the truth is the way to the truth. Now there's no exclusive name of the truth, if you see what I mean. Yeah? The truth in itself, it has its own name. Yeah? Any name can do. The point is, the name of the truth is a way for truth. And then you can understand then what Satguru means. Because the Guru of the truth is the way to the truth. That's what Guru is. Guru is a teacher of that truth. Therefore, he is Satguru. We have a physics Guru, a mass Guru, a, a French Guru. Now we have a Satguru. Somebody who teaches us the truth what is really real and what isn't really real. So Satya Guru joins us to the truth and Satya joins us to the truth. It's like a circle, it's a beautiful circle. You know, We're going to take the Naam and get to truth. We're going to find a Guru and then teach us about the truth. And where does that come from? It's come from the truth. So it's, that's why it's a circle because the Naam comes out of the truth and the Naam is created. Even that Omkar, it made the Naam. This ability to connect to the one, if you want to understand Naam as a connection, the ability to connect to the Naam came from Waheguru. Waheguru didn't make the world and then cut themselves off from the world. Waheguru made themselves and then they allowed us to connect to them. The connection is very important. And how do we, how do, we do that? Through Naam. So that's why it says in Gurbani, Nanak ke kar keval Naam. What that means is, in Nanak's house, in Gurbani's house, there is only Naam. Yeah? So the whole of Gurbani is basically, the whole of Sikhi or Guru Nanak Dev Ji, his only thing he came here is to connect us back to Ik, through the Naam. You see, so that's why we say Sat Naam, and then we say the Naam we, we're going to use, Waheguru. Yeah? Sat Naam, Waheguru. Because that's the name that Guru Nanak Dev Ji gave us to repeat and chant. That's what he's given us as the main mantra, and we're going to say Guru Mantra. And by Gurdashi, the one I talked about earlier, who lived with you know, the three, four, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, sixth Guru, he says that Waheguru Guru Mantra hai. Waheguru is the Guru Mantra. Japa, chant it, and then what happens? 
Hame koi. You lose your hame. You lose this sense of I, I, the I ness, the ego. Not the, not the pride, slightly different. Pride being pr pride in yourself. Ego is much deeper than pride. Ego goes to the point where you think you are real. <laughs> yeah? That's the ego part. So that's what Maharaj is saying that this naam that we've been given is the Waheguru Mantra. That's what we will repeat to get to Waheguru. Ikkon Kaad Satanam. We've been going for about half an hour just to get the first two letters. Yeah? But Satanam doesn't just mean, it means, like, it's true to say that our identity is the truth because that's the only thing that's real. Yeah? So we say that name means my identity is the truth. That's also true. But Sat, Maharaj is saying, is the only thing that's real and Naam is the way to that truth. So the whole of Gurbani is explaining Naam, how to get there, how to do it. And tomorrow when we go to Japji Sahib, we'll, say, we'll see why Japji Sahib teaches us about the Naam and how to get there. Um, the next line. After that, there's, by Gurdasi, there's five words given for Vai Guru. Five names also given for Vai Guru, just there. Yeah? And the first one is Gartar Puruk. Now, Gartar Puruk. Gartar means a doer. The one that does anything. If you imagine, um, I do something, I didn't. The, the doer did something. Everything is by the doer. Karta. And Puruk means the being that does. So he is Karta Puruk. So when we understand like, there's a, there's a, in the whole of the world, there's the biggest dilemma that people face here, is why did God do bad to me? You know this biggest problem people have like, they always say, why did this happen to me? So this Karta Puruk kind of answers that question. Because it tells you the truth of what it is. The Creator does everything, good and bad. Because the only thing there is that's doing anything is Kartapur. So our reaction to it is in our head, fair enough. We might react against it, but actually everything has come from that one. He's the only one that's doing anything. So when something bad happens to us, the person who doesn't believe in the one, doesn't believe the one is real, stop, sorry, the word belief is wrong. Belief means to have an idea, but not to know. The person who knows the one, who knows the one is real, and can connect to the one, doesn't worry. The reason being, they have no doubt of the one's existence. And if they understand the one's existence, they understand Kartapur, means that the one is doing everything. So then they live in bliss. They chill out. Yeah? They, they realise the one is doing everything. I don't have, a, I don't have to worry about it, because we know the one is very loving, and very it's our beloved. So if the child, sort of trust the mother. You see what I mean? The trust of the one is an intrinsic part of connecting to the one. When you connect to the one, it's a loving love. You feel blissed out, you feel full of joy and love. So you trust the one. Therefore, the one can't do anything bad to us. Yeah? So then the Kartapur means that when something bad, bad happens to us, we think, it's not bad, the one did it. Yeah? And I love the one. And I trust the one. Yeah? So the, the connection is the important part. Without the connection, none of this stuff makes any sense. It's like looking at it from the outside and wondering, sounds a bit strange. <laughs> connect, connect first and all of this stuff will make sense. Yeah? So that's why the Naam comes before Kartapur. We have to connect first. Understand the theory, Ikkohankar. Understand the way to the one, to the Naam. Connect and then you say, oh, Kartapur. Everything is made by that one. Everything is being done by that one. Why am I stressed out? What am I worrying about when everything is done by the one? And the word in Gurbani, for those that understand Gurbani, says, So karta chinta kare jin upaya jag. This is from Asakiva. And what that means is, that karta, that doer, is the one who worries. He is the one who worries because he is the one who made the world. Not me. I didn't make nothing. Yeah? So I don't worry about it. Yeah? The word karta is used there as well. So to understand Kartapur is to just chill, a supreme chill. I didn't do anything, I'm not doing anything, I'm no one. I don't actually, I'm not real. And then the word Purk has a, a second meaning to it. So it's the being that's doing everything. The word Purk has another meaning to it. It means it's the, it's the male element. You can understand like the world may be female and male element. For us, the Sikhi, it's the most feminine of all religions of, there are there because we are all women and Waheguru is the male. 
Yeah? It's sikhi, the theology is feminine. To get to God, you must be a woman. Yeah? So in Gurbani, the line comes up says, Everybody is a woman, the one is a male. So to be a bride of God, if you read Gurbani, if you read English translation, you'll see, Oh bride. And Guruji says, I'll go and ask my sisters, how do I get to God? How do I, how do I meet my husband Lord? My sisters. He doesn't just mean the females, he means all of us. Yeah? He's saying we're all women to Vaheguru. So this Purkh comes in there as well. Um, karta Purkh. Now here's a beautiful one. Then, once we chilled out and we relaxed because we're not the ones in charge. Yeah? It says, Nere Paul, be without fear. Now Vaheguru is without fear. What's Vaheguru afraid of? Vaheguru is the only one there is. Why well, is not afraid of anybody? There is no fear to be had when we become a Nirpo. And if you meditate upon Nirpo, Gurbani says you will become without fear. Now, it's not the fact that because the one is doing everything that we just give up. So it's got to curl up in a corner and die. You know, some people think, oh, what's the point? I can't do anything. <laughs> why can we do everything? I can't, I might just curl up in a corner and die. Now, why is giving us a way of living which is in tune with the one? And we do that way of living, but we shouldn't be fearful of anything. Because you know what? Everything in life is a test. If you live in accordance with this way of the one, you will get tested every time. People will try and kill you, in fact, at some point, if you sign up and say the truth. If you were in China right now, and you lived in the way of the truth, and you said, this is wrong, you'd get killed. Right? In fact, there's a blind guy right now who's escaped to the US, everybody's praising him. The only thing he ever did to make him such a danger to Chinese thing was he decided to talk about forced abortions. Mm. I mean, this thing has been around for 50 odd years. Everybody knows Chinese between forced abortions. He just stood up and documented it. And he was persecuted in such a horrible way. What if he stood up and said the whole thing is wrong? The he denounced the Communist Party. You wouldn't exist anymore. The Sat is a very hard way. The truth, what is real, and saying what is true, Mara says, be Nirpo, without fear. But then, correspondingly to without fear, is nirvair. Now the word ver doesn't just mean enemy, it means the idea of having somebody who's against you. Here's you, and here's somebody who you think is against you, a veri. You know, veri means somebody who is your enemy. To have no veri means to have no enemy. So basically, if you imagine somebody who's got no fear and got no enemy, only got love. Yeah. Because they're full of this satna. And they're not scared of anything, but they've also got nothing against them. They go anywhere they want, and they're full of happiness and, and calm and chilled out, but they're not at all thinking, no one is against me. So that's why, for example, a Sikh is very happy to go into a mosque. I've been to a mosque, and there's nothing wrong with it. Go to a church, when I was in the army for four years, we should go to church every Sunday. And I'd be sitting there belting out the hymns, right? And the soldiers who are CV, right, which nowadays means nothing, yeah? They would be like, why are you singing the hymn, sir? Yeah, you, you're supposed to be a Sikh. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's only one God. <laughs> What's confusing about all of this? It's the world that imposes mm -hmm. the confusion by the divisions. To be near there means there's no enemy, enemy of you. And also, you harbour no ill will towards anybody. To walk around without any ill will. You become almost like a child. You can tell a child off, and then 10 seconds later, they'll come up to you full of happiness. It doesn't hold any ill will. It just sees everything is beautiful, you know. So when they say, like, when Jesus says, you know, you have to be like a child to get into God, kind of, kind of that is, is this nirpa or nirvana. Child's not, it's fearless. You know, you have to tell the kid, don't fall down the stairs. <laughs> the child will never think of it. They'll just go for it and think, maybe I can, and, just, and you find them at the bottom of the stairs, you know, crying. I've got kids, so you put gates up everywhere trying to block them. <laughs> because you don't know what they're going to do next, because they're fearless. And the same way, they've got no enemies. Yeah? We can learn a lot from that. Nirpa or Nirva. And Waheguru is also without enemy. Now, why this is important also, if you've come from a Islamic or Christian or Judaic background, you've got this idea that God has enemies. It's built into the, into the scripture in many ways. That some people went there, some people were their favoured people, and some people were not their favoured people, and then some people got smoked by God, and off they went from the place, and then they fell into inequity and they got smoked some more. And they finally realized their mistakes and they came back into the path of righteousness. <coughs> then they forgot again. Then they got a bit. This idea, right, the reason it goes against what we think is because we think God should be impartial. The law should be impartial. We think God should be impartial. 
we think God should love everybody. It doesn't make sense for God to just love one group of people. Yeah? Because ik has come from the ik. So this, this kind of talks about that part as well. Yeah? Nirpo, nirve. There's only no fear, no hate. There's no, no special people. So when we seek think we're special, it's not true. So Sikhi, the religion, doesn't call itself special. Yeah? And they say, oh, you should become a Sikh. So when we go out there, people say Sikhs don't preach. That's true. We don't tend to preach nowadays. But Guru did used to preach. But when they preach somewhere, they didn't necessarily say become a Sikh. There's lines in Gurbani that talk about, if you want to be a good Muslim, this is the kind of Muslim you should be. If you want to be a good Hindu, this is the kind of Hindu you should be. Guru is giving advice to other people about how they can be better in their own faith and not have to necessarily change as far as society is concerned. But nowadays, people fall into the old trap of having enemies straight away. And you have an enemy, then you try to attack that enemy or find somewhere to defend yourself against that enemy. Yeah? So you fall into this away from the ik. So we should try. Everything is inside the Mool Mantra, as they say. Yeah? And the Mool Mantra is so deep. All of our problems will be solved if we just focus on the Mool Mantra and learn from it. Then, good sat, nirpo, nirvair. That's two words now. Kartapur, nirpo, nirvair. And the next two, akal, um, murad, ajuni, and then set. Nirpo, nirvair is almost one, because they're qualities, yeah? And this, so five, the five words that Prabhupada Gurdasi says are Karta Purk, Nirpa Nirvair, Akal Murit, Ajuni, Sab, no, I'll go wrong. Akal Satnam, Karta Purk, Nirpa Nirvair, Akal Murit, Ajuni Sab. And then the Guru Prasad is separate. So these five. So the Udan Nirpa Nirvair, Akal Murit. Now, have you ever heard of that, um, what's that Indiana Jones movie when the guy is. Uh, the Om Puri, the famous actor, is going Kali Ma Shakti De. <laughs> you see that movie when the, the hand burns, yeah? Right, you feel that? Kali Ma. Now, Kali is a goddess of death, yeah? She's the one that's got the tongue coming out, the necklace of, of garlands of skull. Kal comes from, the word Kal means death. Yeah? And Mala said everybody will die, right? Now, so when we say Akal, it's the opposite of Kal. A Kal, without Kal. So without death, a kal murid. So it's immortal. We are mortal. We have to live. We have to die. And there's an important feeling in this to understand that death is real. Can actually solve a lot of our problems. Because we forget when we forget death, we start living like there is no death. We start living there is no tomorrow. We forget the one who made us, and we forget we've got a good way to go. So to understand kal is to understand a kal. And one of the parables used in Gurbani is like a migratory bird flies long, long way. You know, has to travel thousands of miles. Then the same with us. And this life is the same as having one stop of that bird for a bit of food, a drink of water, and a little sleep, and off it goes on a thousand mile journey. This this is how how real this life is, as one stop for that bird. Yeah, for, it feels like a very long stop, right? We're around for about 40, 50, 100, 60, 70, 80 years. But this is as important as it is. Is that one stop on a long journey that we've got? And the word, when we say O on God, with that word, in Gurbani it says, you must have heard Tupchi Sahib, Kita Pasao Eko Kabao. Yeah, you've heard that line? And what that means is, with the one word, right, they made hundreds and thousands of Lak Dariao. Dariao means a river. Now, it doesn't mean that the rivers in the world were made by one word. Now, that's a simple translation. They were obviously made by the one word, yeah? But what it means is that the life cycles that we go through, 8.4 million lives, 884 lakhs of cycles, these are made by that one word. So we are subject to the hukam, the, the order, which is that we have to go through life cycles. But Wahiguru isn't. Wahiguru is akal, without death. Once we connect to this Wahiguru, we can become without death as well. Because death is the end of this life and back into reincarnation in another life. But if we connect to that one, then we don't die then. <coughs> our life finishes and we, as our soul and our consciousness, it continues into the next life. Right? Into a bigger, bigger, bigger life. We become immortal. So actually, when we say Sat Sri Akal, people say as a hello, we say, we're saying the true is, the, is Sri Akal. We're giving it a name now. The Akal has become into a name, Sri Akal. 
See, the same as we said the name Sri Vaheguru. Sri Vaheguru means you made it into a name. And so when we say a name for God, Satanam, even a call can be used as a mantra. And the Nihangs do do it a lot. Yeah? They do an Akal job. As a friend of mine, he sings his, his son is called Akal job, which means the chanting of Akal. And the Nihangs will do Vaheguru Mantra and Akal. Because it, it's a very fear, like a very strong mantra here, and suddenly you become fearless. Because you think, I'm going to be immortal. For a warrior to be thinking he's immortal is quite a good thing. Yeah? Because he's not scared of death. Right? And he's going to have to go and fight. He's probably going to die anyway. So be fearless. And Akal is one, use, one word used. Akal Murat. So the form of Wahiguru, the Murat, the word Murat means uh, form, like an idol. So in, in Hinduism, the thing that is they, they bow down to is called a Murti. Murti means an image. Yeah? Or an idol. And what Guru Nandaji is saying is, or why Guru Tal Guru Nandaji in the Mahamata is, my form is immortal. Yeah? So therefore, all the idols that we have are not real. So, all, and the thing about Gurbani is, although it's a book, it's a message, and the message is immortal as well. So, what we bow down to is not any murti or murti being any idol, we bow down to the word which is itself immortal. I mean, it's been the same word being around for years. Before Gurnadeji, the same truth existed. After them, the same truth existed. And it's the truth that we follow. So, Guru Granth Sahib being purely truth, it's immortal as well, because it can't be destroyed. But idols can be destroyed. So this is against, this word, Agar Mudra, it can be seen as being, being against idol worship. And that's a good thing. Because when we start attaching ourselves to something which is subject to being destroyed, then where is our faith going to be? We have to attach to the one that's not able to be destroyed by anybody. A God. We'll, we'll go back and do one mantra in a little while because these guys are sitting here. But to finish off with the last couple of words, a Kaal Murat being without any end, then a Juni, the last five, last word, a Juni Sepa. Now a Juni, a June, uh, apart from being the month of the year, also in Punjabi means life cycle. Yeah? This is our June. We are in a human June right now. This is our life as a human being, as a human. This is in our, in our 8.4 million Junes. This is the June we're in as a human being. And Guru says he is a Juni. Why Guru is a Juni? So all the times that we thought that God took birth and came upon the earth, didn't happen. Yeah? God never took birth. So if you can understand like the whole of the Christian idea is based on God took birth and came and then sacrificed his own body to die. This, this would say that no, why Guru is a Juni. No one ever took birth. Why Guru never took birth? Why Guru's always been outside of this cycle of life? But we are. And it's important because when you say the opposite of something, you acknowledge its existence. So we are subject to death. Why Guru isn't? Yeah? So we understand death is real. And it's important to understand death. But also, we are subject to, uh, to Junes. Why Guru isn't? Now, the whole of the world, honestly, 50% of the world, they did a poll, they did a Gallup poll. They did a poll of the whole world. More than 50% of this world believes in reincarnation. But it's very hard to get your head around reincarnation. Right? It might be worthwhile here to spend a few minutes talking about reincarnation because this is what a Juni is talking about. Now, people say, well, reincarnation. The reason that the Christian church decided early on to reject reincarnation, even though there were people that blatantly agreed with it, was because they felt that if you have many lives, you might think, forget it, I'm doing it in this life, I'll wait for my next life. <laughs> so you, they, they worry that people might not have uh, enough of a commitment doing it in this life, and they might leave it for the next life. Because the fear tactic was quite important. You know, they chose that the fear tactic was more effective than the love tactic. Now, the good Andes' tactic is the one of love. Now, it's true that you will have many lives. But the human life, Mala says, is the most valuable one. Because the only time you can connect to Y group is as a human being. We can't do it when you're a dog and a cat and a, and a different kind of animal or a, or a you know, insect. Now, the, what it says in Buddha, Buddha says something quite interesting. He says, if you drop a needle from the, from a, from the heavens and it landed on a needle on the earth, 
Imagine you're in an aeroplane and you're in through a needle and you expected it to land on a needle on the earth because that is how likely you are to be born as a human being again. That's how valuable this life is. So there is a massive point that the human life is extremely valuable because imagine right now all of us have the ability to save our guru, to connect to our true beloved and if we don't, waste this human life, who knows what life we're going to get next. You know, might have wasted it, you might end up coming as a cat or a dog or whatever else. The reality of that, of that cycle is something that we kind of forget. But if I was to give you an example, if you love somebody, let's say, you know, we've, we all like watching love stories because it reveals something so much inside us. We heard of Romeo and Juliet and, you know, all the famous and love stories. If you love somebody and you fell in love with somebody and someone said to you, why don't you take a break in this life and see him in your next life? Who would buy that? <laughs> Who, if you all really love, just put your hand up and I'll be in love, I'm in love now with my wife. But anybody else, <laughs> um, anybody else want to sort of not see that person again for the rest of this life and come back and see him in the next life? No. No one would take you up, yeah? It sounds crazy, doesn't it? Because when you're in love with Waikuru, you won't want to wait until your next life to see Waikuru, you'll do it now. So this is why it's a love tactic yeah, and not the fear tactic. Waikuru is so great. It is your other half, yeah? and it's the other half much bigger than any other half out there. You can't, there's a, there's, there's a way to understand it, there's a God-sized hole inside of you. Yeah? And you know we say, oh I have a hole inside me for something, I'm yearning for something. The hole is big, it's big as wide. <laughs> you can't fill it with anything else. If you go to fill it with anything else afterwards, you won't, you won't manage to do it. And the first body of Jesus talks about this, you know, that refers to what the hole inside you is. You can't fill it with anything else apart from my group. Yeah? And this Akal, sorry, Ajuni, it refers to the value of this life for us. But also why is outside of this. Yeah? So never try to make Wai Guru into human being like us. He's outside of that life cycle. Sepang. This bit is like uh, is is kind of really confusing to understand. Self created. Sepang. Sam means, you know, like myself. Bam. Created by themselves. So why grew made why grew. Yeah? And if you really think about this, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah? That's good because why grew doesn't make much sense. But it's real. So that what we say is like when I said at the beginning when I said um What that means is what can I speak? What can I say and look and speak? What story can I speak? about this story which is unable to be told. Sapang is one, one really good example of that. How can we explain the inexplicable that why Guru made themselves? But it doesn't really matter, really, does it? Even the whole idea of June and the whole idea of you know, reincarnation, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is we can connect to that one. And no one made that one. It's the source of everything. So Sapang can be seen to understand as it's the source of everything. No one else made that one. Okay? And also in our life, our soul is part of that one. We have to go back to that one. Sepang. So we've done Ik Omkar Sat Nama through the name Karta Purukha. The doer, chill out, is, is your true love, your other husband, your husband really. Nirpo, Nirva, don't be fearful. Don't have any hate towards anybody. Be full of love. A Akal murat is immortal. To be immortal, you must become one with the one. A Juni Sapa. We are in June. Be afraid. Also, don't be afraid. Because we can we can get back there to that one. Sapa. And then and Sapa can also have one meaning that we have to do it. See? We can't not do it. You see what I mean? Like we have to achieve this thing. It's not going to be happening just like magic. We're going to have to connect with that one. We have to create ourselves. One, I was having a conversation with um, Karta Singh in, in, um, in Le Martine. And it was a great conversation. He said, look, um, even if I give you that experience, not I give you, but even if you have that experience of connecting the one, we're talking about morals and ethics. Yeah? And even if you have that experience of connecting the one, you know, one day you're sitting there, and suddenly you feel like me mega bliss, disconnect from your body, whatever it is that happens to you, you have an amazing experience, you're in tears, 
What happens next? You come back to earth, so to speak, yeah? And you have to go on with your life. Right? Isn't it? And creating yourself means that once you've had this experience, you have to create the person you want to be. Your morals and your character has to be remade in accordance with the divine truths about life. And those truths are the ones about compassion, about righteousness, about equality. These things are what make us real and yeah? make our personality. So we have to create our personality as well. The enlightenment is one thing. Following the enlightenment is a lot of hard work to do. You have to create the person that you have to be, the loving, giving, fearless and without enemy kind of person. We have to make that person. We have to change our character. No matter if we're druggies, no matter if we're fully, you know, we've got four or five girlfriends and we live in the player life, or we are, up, you know, rich people with money, all these things fly out the window as soon as we have that experience. Because the one is real. And then we have to live in accordance with the truth of the one. That there is only one. And we have to create that ourselves. Hard work is required. Can you see what I mean? Yeah? We have to sow the seeds that we're going to reap the fruits later on. The last line, the word good prasad, is, uh, has three, for me, it has three meanings. All three are totally true and apply at the same time. Yeah? And this, it, some people say by the Guru's grace. What it, uh, prasad means grace. Now we have prasad. And good prasad. <coughs> One way of understanding good prasad would be to say that this is the Mool Mantra now. The Mool Mantra has given us so far, the Maha Mantra has given us attributes of Waheguru, names of Waheguru, so to speak. We've got five names so far, and now understand that the Naam is the way. These are all attributes of Waheguru. What is, why is Guru Prasad an attribute of Waheguru? This is the debate, isn't it? Well, why is Guru Prasad an attribute? Surely that's the Guru's attribute, and not the, not the attribute of Waheguru. But actually, the word Guru comes from Guru. Guru means enlightenment, from darkness to light. And when we meditate, we get enlightened. See what I mean? And when we connect to that one, it's an enlightening experience. You can't have an experience of the Creator and not get enlightened at the same time. It's an experience. We can't connect to the Creator without having an experience that is profound. And that profound experience in itself is enlightening. So Vaheguru has the attribute of being enlightening. It's one of the intrinsic attributes of Vaheguru, Guru Prasad. He gives, and it's a graceful thing. The Bible is having grace upon us when we connect to Him. Which but, is like the rediscovery, isn't it? Yeah. As well. Yeah. You rediscover the one, so. You yeah, you see, it, that's why it's a mantra, because you can repeat it again and again and again. Yeah. That's where you go. So from Guru Prasad, you can go back to Ik, or oh, Ankar. Mm -hmm. So the Guru Prasad, what's the, what is the Guru's Prasad? Ik, or oh, Ankar. Yeah? So that Ik, that's why it's, it's a chain. That's why all these things, even Ik, Ankar in itself, when we said to you, you come out from that one, you go back to that one. That's why you go back to ik after ik. If you just do a job of this ik on God, you go from on God, ik, on God, ik. So it's a similar thing. So, so exactly, so you, the Waheguru is enlightening. No one has ever had an experience of Waheguru without having some kind of truth and enlightenment happen to them at the same time. Another way of understanding Guru Prasad is why was Gunanak given this mantra at that time? A Sikhi would say, is that at that time he was given Amrit from Mahaguru and a job. So his job was to be the Guru. So he was given power at that time. He was blessed with Guruship from the One and told, go out there, I now give you a mandate. And the mandate is you are now the Guru. You now have the ability to teach people about the truth, the One, Satguru. So he's a Guru of the truth. See only a Satnam, Satguru. Guru Nanak got given, he was given the Guruship from, he came from the Sat, from the One, and he's now got the power to join us back to the Sat. So we say in Gurbani, um, we say, Aise Guru ko bala bala jaye, aap mukat mohitari. That means, such a Guru, I'll be a sacrifice, who is himself free, who's got Mukti, and he takes me across. So Guru Nanak at that point, he was it. He achieved salvation, or whatever you want to call it, at that time. When he was 30, he merged with the one. Then he was, he, he could have stayed there. He was sent back with a mission. Go and free everybody else. And with Gurbani, we say that if you can understand the four ages, have you heard of the four ages? You probably have, right? So you've got Satyug, the age of truth, 
then you've got the two more, Dwapur and Treta, and then you've got Kalyu, where we are now. The word Kalju, Kalyu, is everybody familiar with that word, Kalyu? Yeah? Some people call it the Age of Darkness, some people call it the Iron Age. Whatever it refers to, it's an age where if you have a table with four legs, in Satyu they had all four legs, and it was stable. Morality was there, reality was there, truth was there. In every youth they cut off one leg. And now the poor table only got one leg holding it up. Yeah? And it's fallen pretty much right over. And the world is a bit like that. What is true is hidden, and what is false is supreme. You know, we believe in democracy, but there's no democracy. The people who are the most richest are the ones in power. But we say, yeah, we're all people, power, democracy. See the, see the illusion? Yeah? Then, we don't believe in reincarnation. The truth of it is out there, scientific proof is out there, but no one believes in it. Majority, the biggest growing doctrine at the moment is atheism. And it's really, you'll have a Gallup poll, you'll have every year they have a Gallup poll. And every 10 years, sorry. The census, sorry. So, it, uh, Jedi is a sorry. Yeah. But <laughs> atheism is the fastest growing thing in this country. Yeah, not Islam as they say, but atheism is fast. So more people are don't don't regardless of like okay, agnosticism I can understand. Because you know, I don't know. Yeah, fair enough, you don't know, that's great. That's a good place to start from. I don't know. <laughs> to admit you don't know is a good place to start from. To say I know it's not real, crazy, isn't it? When you can connect to that one, you can actually have an experience of the one, you can say I, I don't believe it's real. Yeah. This is atheism, and that's a, you know, you think ignoring the truth about yourself is what atheism is. And it's a real react of the reality of the truth about yourself, where you came from. So, what um, Guru Prasad is that Guru was given a job, a mandate. Now, when I said at the beginning, let's forget religion for a second. If we can just try and do that now, just forget there is religion. There's only one creator. And there's all these people that have been sent by that one creator with access to the truth and teachings about the truth. When we see the ten gurus in a line from 16, uh, 1499 when Gurudev became the guru to 1699 when the Khalsa Panth was made, in that 200 year period, is there any in the history of mankind, like if you look at Galyu, is any, anybody like, can we say, point to ten people who were sent by the one? with the same message consistently who lived who lived and lived that life they actually showed that the world works this way and they sacrificed themselves to prove it to be true um, so for, for a sick point of view and this is why I say sick point of view from a sick point of view the ten gurus they proved the word to be true they came out of the word and they lived it Guru Arjan Dev Ji knew the word was truth, he ended up being sacrificed and being killed for it. And Guru Gobind Ji sent his own father off to be sacrificed, and his own sons off to be sacrificed. But he lived this truth fully. And then he gives the Guruship back to the Granth, the Holy Book, yeah? the Word. So from the Word it came, and the ten lived, and they went back to the Word. So far as we're concerned, from a Sikh point of view, the Sikh philosophy is that Guru Nanak Dev Ji was sent to take mankind from the Kalyu, where everything's fallen over, back to Satyu. The Sikh philosophy would be that we have to establish Satyu on the earth. So the age of enlightenment will come when the truth that Gurundeji came with is then established back over the earth. What we just talked about with Ik, Om God, name is the way, without fear, without hate, that this truth has to be the prevalent truth in the world. And then we're back in Satyu. So he's come. So it says, Kalatadan Guru Nanak What that means is, Guru Nanak has come to swim us across. Now I know that in the history of mankind, let's say go back like even 5,000 years, which is probably about less than half a year again. In the last 5,000, so many philosophies have been around. But if you put a Sikh in the middle of a room with a Hindu, a Muslim, a Christian, a Jew, and a Buddhist, and a Jain, I guarantee you that the Sikh can talk to every single one of them. Yeah? Because this philosophy is the same. You know, we can talk to a Buddhist about renunciation and step, stepping away from the world, being like a lotus flower within the mud, and about meditation and uh, mindfulness and all those things. 
and then we can talk to a Muslim about the one and worshipping the one and bowing down to the one and having faith in the will of the Raza of the one. We can then talk to a Hindu about uh, bhajans and singing and reincarnation and the idea of worshipping our Guru and the idea of listening to what the Guru is told and about devotion. We can then talk to a Christian about Christ being the Guru figure and loving his feet. You know, we say loving the Guru's feet is an important part. About Mary Magdalene and her love for, the, for Christ. We can talk about singing as a, as a congregational thing. That's so important. And then we can go and talk to somebody who is a Jain and a Baha'i with the same idea. Sikhi is like one of this weird faith where no one knows where to bracket us. Because yeah? if you look at the rest of the world, no one really knows about Sikhs unless they, for example. Most people don't know who Sikhs are. But the ones that know, they're a little bit surprised by it. And the reason I say that is because on my door, I always get people knocking, Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, with that beautiful picture, the watchtower. And it's a very loaded question they ask you. They show you this picture of a watch, and they go, look at this world. And they go, look at these people playing happily, and everybody's friends. And they go, wouldn't it be nice to live in a world like this? Who's going to say no? Who's going to say no? <laughs> I'd like to go around with a club, burn the trees down, beat up all the baby lambs, and all that kind of stuff, you know? Who says that? So it's a loaded question. Of course you're going to say yes. The world would be great like that. Yeah? And it's a bit like this. When we tell people about Sikhi, that Maharaj says everybody's equal. There is no religion. Men and women are equal. There's no caste. There's no creed. We should feed people. We should protect people's rights. The Guruji himself went and fought for, you know, the sixth Guru made a mosque. The ninth Guru saved the whole of Hinduism by giving his head. It's a little bit like showing the watchtower. It sounds a bit too good to be true. Who are these people that set up this religion? Who are these people that decided to change the whole of like, Punjab and the whole of India? Effectively, just one guy got up and says, I'm Gunan. Ten generations later, Guru Gobind Singh setting up the Khalsa, fighting against the Mughal Kingdom, establishing a state within a state. Who are these people that came along? And what Sikhi says is, they were sent to establish Satyu. That's the mission, if you want to understand the Khalsa mission. The Khalsa mission is to spread Dharma across the whole world. Dharma means righteousness and truth. We're not saying convert a Hindu Sikhi, that's the biggest thing that we have. Even when you spread it, you don't have to say be a Sikh. It's the truth we want. You can be a Christian and still be connected to the truth. It be a, it's a very strange way of looking at the world you know, because it's not exclusivist, it's inclusivist. And this is the thing that Guru Nanak Ji said. So the Guru Prasad means that Guru is being given a mission. And the final part of what Guru Prasad is, is that Guru has the power to give us Naam. So Guru Dev Ji has come with a power, not just a mandate, but a power to bless us with Naam. So we say that when Guru blesses us, we can connect. So Guru is like, if you want to say, um, you know we're talking about that guy, to, the, what, what, there's a, there's a, in Punjabi culture, it's something called Bacholan. Bacholan is, you, when you get, when you get married, uh, a person comes along, takes your details, find somebody suitable and hooks you up and they're the first person that hooked you up with your you know like a matchmaker that's the easiest way you know like hitch or whatever a matchmaker <laughs> now guru is a matchmaker we're the bride and why guru is a groom so guru's come as a matchmaker but also the guru is not just a matchmaker we said the first time to introduce us to one guru guru is also part of the groom in many ways yeah guru has the power to bless us with Naam. So when we say like, why do we bow down to Guru? Because Guru can bless us. And the, and the truth of that is seen by all the Guruships. Guru Angad became the Guru when he got blessed by Guru Nanak. And suddenly he was now gone from a holy Sikh to Guru. He was, you know, divine light incarnate, effectively, manifest. Then Guru Angad blessed Amar Das and he became Guru Amar Das. Then Ram Das got blessed by Guru Amar Das and he became Guru Ram Das. He was Jethaji and he wasn't Ram Das. He got called Ram Das afterwards. And it says in Adela Sahib, there's a story about Guru Ram Das. You know in those days when you got married, um, the husband, uh, the father of the bride would say, ask for something, like a dowry. You know the dowry thing? Say, I'll, I'll ask for something. So how Guru Ram Das became the Guru is that he married the daughter of Guru Amar Das Ji. The story goes that this Guru Amar Das Ji's daughter got to a marriageable age and his wife, who was a great, you know, uh, Sikh, she said, we should marry her off, she's getting to the right age now. And he goes to the Guru Amar Das Ji, okay, fine, 
What kind of husband do you want? And at that time they were making Harmandar Sahib. You know, the, they, they started the work, sorry, in Goindwal. They started the work of making Goindwal. You know where the, the body Sahib is? When you go down 84 steps. And um, so Guru Amanda says to the wife, What kind of husband do you want for your daughter? And she sees Pai Jethaji, who is Ramdas, and then becomes Guru Amanda later on. And she likes him, he's a good, he's a good Sikh. He's young, he's charismatic, he's doing a lot of seva. She says, someone like him will be great. And you know, at that time they used to bring the, um, the people to do the horoscopes and stuff, yeah? And that was a common practice, so Guru didn't really knock it away. He just said that it's not relevant to him. But they were going to go find a bitch, uh, somebody to go and find someone like Jethaji. And Guru Nanadasi says, there's no one like him. It has to be him. So, so then they married him off to their daughter. And then, Guru Amandasi says to him, Jethaji, you're marrying my daughter. And at that time, uh, he wasn't a guru. He said, what do you want? And said, I'll give you a, a boon. And, and it happens in Sikhi that people give a boon from a guru. And even like great Sikhs, you know, when they achieve something, or guru's happy with them, even nowadays, Guru Sahib comes down in physical form and says, what do you want? I'll bless you with something. So Bhai Jethaji was asked, what do you want? And at that point, he said, the, the, the Shabbat that comes in Rara Sahib, which was Asra Gujri Mahila Chota, Harke Jal Sadguru Sadparka, Viro Guru Guru Pas, Ram Kire, Kiram Sadguru Sarnai, Kadaya, Naam Pargas, Mere Meet Gurdev, Moko Ram Naam Pargas. That's the line. Mere Meet Gurdev, Oh my beloved, Oh my Guru, who is a Devta, who is the incarnate light of Wai Guru, give me. Naam Pargas, give me the, give me that the Naam becomes fully enlightened within me. Let me shine with the Naam. Let me become one with the Naam. That's what he asked for. Clever guy. <laughs> of all the things that he could have been asking for, he could have asked for money, you know, whatever he wanted. All he asked for was to give me full Naam. Give me the full Naam. Moko Ram Naam Pargas. And then the next thing he says, Gurmat Naam Mera Pran Sakari Har Kirit Hamari Rehras. He goes, with the Guru's wisdom, let the Naam be married to my breath. With every breath, let me say the Naam. The Pran. You know what Pran is? Yeah? He says, let every breath say the Naam. And that's why, when we talk about Wai Guru Mantra in a bit, we're going to do a bit of similar now and go back to Wai Guru Mantra. One of the ways of saying Wai Guru is with, the, is with the breath. And the deepest form of meditation is Swa Swa Simran. Every breath meditate upon the one. So, um, Can I just ask you a question? Sure. You said that uh, Guru Prasad has three, three yeah. meanings. Yeah. Can you just summarize that? Sure. Sorry, I go off on one side of the time. <laughs> so, the, so the one meaning is that um, Vaheguru, the, the experience of Vaheguru is Guru. We get enlightened, we go from darkness to light, from Gu to Ru. So that's one meaning. So the, the, the experience of Vaheguru is enlightening. So that's why it's with Vaheguru's blessings we get Guru. The second meaning is that throughout mankind's history, Waheguru has sent people with a message for people. Yeah? He sent saints and holy people with a message. Right? And that's we say Hara Juga Juga Bhagatabaya. And Waheguru in every age has sent holy people. Yeah? And we'll go into this a little while when we talk about, about the Guru Mantra and how it's made up Wahe Guru. And even the syllables correspond to different gurus sent in every age. And in this age, we say, like, so he sent holy people. And in this age, the person that's here to take us across from the dark age to the right, to the, uh, the uh, truth age, is Guru Nanak. So this, it refers to Guru Nanak Dev Ji being sent with a mission. He's now Satguru. He's been sent, like, sort it out now. A lot of people got sent, they got waylaid, people took the message, jacked it, made it something different. You go and sort it out, set up a lineage that cannot be changed. And set up the truth in earth. The third meaning of Guru Prasad is that Guru has been given the power to bless us with Naam. So when we say, why do we worship our Guru? It's because the Guru can bless us. The Guru has got supreme power. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji has come vested with the power to say to somebody, Naam, and bless you with enlightenment. So he's got that power. Yeah. So, but it's not an exclusive power, if you see what I mean. Because Guru Granth Sahib Ji has inside it Kabir Ji, Farid Ji. So we're not the kind of people that walk around saying, we've got the Guru, you ain't. 
it's a hard it's a hard path of a Sikh because you've got this truth but you can't go around saying you haven't got it because it's manifest everywhere yeah but the point is is that Guru has this, the undiluted truth as far as we're concerned because no one was allowed to dilute it other people would dilute other people's messages but when it came to Gurus they wrote Guru Granth Sahib Ji themselves yeah and, it, and when the Guru Angad Dev Ji, Arjun Dev Ji, in 1604, 1605, established Guru Ard Granth, that was done under their own system. And then Guru Gobind Singh Ji himself repeated the whole thing from memory. A hundred years later, 1705, they repeated the entire Guru Granth Sahib Ji from memory, back as it is now. And then it was established the Guru in 1708. Yeah? And the same word has been around since then. No one could change even a letter. So that's why we say, for us, the Guru is a depository of all the truth in the world. Because within that depository is Hindu truth, Muslim truth, and every kind of truth you can think about. Yeah, it's an inclusive truth. But it is for us the sounding board. Like if somebody says something sexist, and Guru Granth Sahib sexism is not real, we don't go by somebody who's sexist. That's why some of the Biji stuff didn't get in. Some of the Fariji stuff didn't get in. Because it was, he was one with the one, but some of his stuff was slightly a little bit away. He wasn't subtle guru as far as you would say. He wasn't subtle guru in the sense that he was one with the truth and only speaking the truth. He was a saint. Mm -hmm. yeah? So would you say subtle guru was only Nanak or would you say subtle guru was uh, carried through? In, we say in every age there was subtle guru. No, the other nine gurus. But they were the same. They, they, they were, were the same line. You would also say they were they, were, they all called themselves Nanak. Nanak. So if you look in Gurbani, Every Shabbat has non. There's no yes. Guru Arjan or Guru Ramdas. They're all non. And Guru Gobind. Did you actually use the word Satguru for them? Satguru. And Pai Gurdas says Satguru Nanak Pargatya Mite Tund Jagachanan Hoya. Satguru Nanak came on the earth and he got lightened up. He got Pargat. And then the whole of the darkness of the world was fight. And there's a Shabbat in uh, Gurbani. There's a story. The first Shabbat in Guru Granth Sahib Ji, after you have Japji Sahib, Rara Sahib and Kirtan Soila, the evening, they have the prayers. The Guru Granth Sahib Ji starts with the daily prayers, if you didn't know. Starts off with Japji Sahib, then the evening prayer, Rara Sahib, and then has Kirtan Soila afterwards. And then, Guru Granth Sahib Ji starts. You see what I mean? And what it says there, Siri Rag, the first Shabbat, is a conversation that apparently Kalyu himself, we say Kalyu, the spirit of the dark age, came and met Guru Nanak. And they had a bit of a tussle, if you if you understand, they had a conversation. Kalyu came to him, comes to meet Gunanak. And Gunanak says, You can't come here because over here is Kirtan. So it says, Kalyu Kaljug me Kirtan Pardhana. So in Kirtan, this singing of uh, singing, singing is the most highest form of meditation in Kalyu. That's why in the Gurdwara they sing Kirtan. So Kaljug was told, You can't come into the Guru Sangat. Because here we sing Kirtan, and Kirtan is going to be your nemesis. Kirtan is going to destroy Kalyu. Right? And Kalyu gets a bit sad, apparently. And Kalyu goes, Well, why can't I have Kirtan? You know, everybody else can enjoy Kirtan and get Mukti. The spirit of the dark, of the dark age says, Why can't I have Kirtan? And Gandhi says, Okay, at the end of Kalyu, you can have five minutes of Kirtan, and that will be enough for you to get, get Mukti as well. So even the spirit of the dark age is scared of this. So in the Gurdwara, Kalyuk he says a conversation. Kalyuk tried to bribe Guru Nanak. That's what happened. So the first Shabbat talks about if I gave you millions of uh, houses and thought and all that. Guru Nanak says that wouldn't equal even one second of saying why or connecting to your name. So that he goes, even if I gave you gold and women and all these things. That first Shabbat, if you read it, you see it talks about what Kalyuk offers Guru Nanak and Guru Nanak turns it down for the sake of the Nam. And he says, in this world, Kirtan is the most important thing. So that's a, that's a funny thing we talk about. So in this, we, we talk about this when we get to Vaigun Mantra, but in this uh, Yug, Dark Age, we say Gnandri is come as Satguru. Yeah? The divine life, the truth, the only truth. Not the exclusive truth, <coughs> but the, the, tr the fully truth. So the job obviously means to chant. And the next four bits are oh, such Jugaad, such happy, such Nanda, Kosi, be such. This is what Gnandri said after that. After he'd been given the Muhammad Dr. Guru Prasad, he then said this, Jab, Aad Sat, Jugaad Sat, Happy Sat, Nanakush. And what that means is, before time began, Wai Guru was true. Yeah? Then when time began, when the ages began, these four ages, that we're talking about now after this, 
Before, they, then at that time, Waigiri was true. And then, now, happy such, now, Waigiri is true. When we say, is Waigiri true? Right now, we can connect, we can have that spiritual experience, right now. And then always and forever, Nanak says, will always be true.
uh, to meditate upon the name, to chant the name, is this Vaiguru Mantra. Uh, the reason we're giving this mantra is um, given by Bhai Guru Das Ji. He's, a, he's a, you know, it's in Guru Gurbani anyway, but he says, by chanting this mantra, we will lose that ego, the sense of we are real, the Vai Guru is not inside us, where the reality is Vai Guru is inside us and we are the ones who are fake. Yeah? So, the Homi is this disease, this illness, this illusion that we suffer from. Now, Vahe Guru. It has four, there's many ways of understanding Vahe Guru, this word mantra. I'm going to go through about five of them today. It's probably loads. So we'll just do a couple of minutes on each one. And they all kind of come back to meditation. Just different ways of saying the same thing. The thing is, is that one day, one will connect with you, and another day, another will connect with you. There's no one right way of saying Vahe Guru. So I don't have to subscribe to that. Whatever goes, whatever works, go with it. The point is, is to connect. Yeah? And the reality is that, that the Vahe Guru is real, is such, and be such. And it will always be true. So we can connect. And we are spiritual. And as Yogi Pajan taught, you know, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So this is very true to what he's saying, and very true to what Guru is saying, that the reality is that Ikkhuan Galar Satanam. And then Guru Prasad. The Guru's mantra is this Vahe Guru. One way of understanding Vahe Guru is the word Wow. Yeah? Wow. If you go to anywhere in the world, when they say wow, most likely you hear a sound that goes like wow, or wow, or woo, or wow. You know, it, it's, it's just an amazing sound that the human beings intrinsically make when they see something amazing. Yeah? And when we see Vahe Guru, when I say we see Vahe Guru, we close our eyes and meditate and we experience Vahe Guru, and even when we can see Vahe Guru with our eyes open, we will say wow. And praise is an intrinsic part of worship. The two sort of go together, like hand in hand. And if you look at most religions, they say, praise the Lord. Or in Islam, they say, sifat salah, sifat and salah, the words they use for me. And in Japji Sahib, it says, just know, bakse sifat salah, nanak baad sahi baad saha. Those that are blessed with the praise of the one, sifat salah, they are kings and they're emperors. They're truly holy and truly royal people. So if we say, that, you know, going to call this the way of achieving as some kind of honor, some kind of royalty in this world, praise of Vahe Guru is one way. So, Wow is praising. See? Wow. Now, I traveled a few countries in my time when I was in a gap year student. And that's how they say it in that place, they go Wow. In China they go Wow. And Vahe. Vaho. 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 We use this in Guru Vaho Vaho Guru Gobind Singh Ape Guru Chela. Vaho Vaho Gobind Singh Ape Guru Chela. That's Wow Wow again. And in Gurbani it says that Sada kahe sada guru vaha. So we're saying wow. So saying vahe guru is like saying wah guru, wah guru, wah guru, wah guru. It's praise built into the mantra. You see, it's an amazing mantra. The praise of vahe guru is built into the name vahe guru. So if you want to try a couple of times to say it now, like we're going to say wow. So imagine the word wahe means wow. Yeah? And then guru, we're talking about guruji and also the truth, and also why Guru, the creator, is also wow. So it's always perfect in that way, because you're praising the Guru, and Guru is getting teased why Guru, why Guru is a... Anyway, it gets, it gets more and more. Let's just start saying wah, wah. So I'll say it once, and then you say it back to me. Yeah? Now we'll do it together this way. So we say, wah he Guru. 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 So, 
the praise is built into the mantra, so wow, yeah, wow, wow, wow. And if you just really, exp when you're saying why do, when you start experiencing why do, then you always say saying wow straight away. So without having to change what you're saying, you can just go straight into wow. So you're saying it already, you're saying wah guru, wah guru, wah guru. So it's built into it. Then, this he, you see this he, that's one way of saying it, it's a wah. But also a va, staying the same as wow, you can make he into a very personal he. In every language in the earth, when we say he, it normally tends to be somebody close to us. He. And then this time, we're going to say wa, he, gu, ru. Gu is being darkness and Guru's light. Again, true enlightener. But this time we say Wa He Guru. It's very personal He. And it becomes like Wa He Guru. So you're talking to somebody. It's your friend, your beloved, the one who made you. So we can say that here, take it a bit longer. So we can say Wa He Guru. Wa Govind. 
And Govind refers to Krishna. Uh, no, Govind is the, is, the, is the name of Sadhguru. And he gave everybody Govind. Now, this was the mantra given Govind, the Govind, the Govind. Yeah? And you know, he says in Gurbani, Hey Govind, Hey Gopal. That's referring to because Govind is, is, uh, means the person who, I think he's the first, the, the word Go comes from cow. Anyway. And Gopal also means the one who's off the cow. Mm -hmm. But the point is, the, the Guru at that time was Govind, and he gave everybody the mantra of Govind the Govind. This is what they used to say, Gaga Govin. Yeah. Then he says that in this Kalyu, sorry, I've got this wrong, my mistake. Sorry, I got that wrong. So in Treta, Sadhguru was Ramji. Ramji, yeah? Ram, we heard Ram. And Hari Rama, Hari Krishna, right? so Rama. And Rama gave every the mantra of Rara Ram. That was the third one, Ram. Yeah? So he said Ram, 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 Ram. And it says in Gurbani as well, Ram, Ram. And it comes in there, Gurbani, quite a lot. Yeah? It says Ram Ram Ko is Devat Bhagi. Say, the lucky ones find it by saying Ram Ram. Then the fourth, he says, the, the Kalyu, the Guru, was Guru Nanak. And he gave everybody Govind. He said, to sing Govind. Right? But after he gave everybody Govind and all, he says that Guru Nanak is going to combine all four. From the four ages, the four sounds were combined into one fifth. And this fifth one, he says, it says, Chare Joge Chor Jogi Panchai Vich Aap Samaye Charu Achar Ek Kar Make them one Vahe Guru Jap Mantra Japave So he made all four into one This is where Vahe Guru came from So this mantra is given the fifth status as in supreme because it's a combination of all four it's been combined to make one mantra called Vahe Guru It's, it's the ultimate mantra because it, it, it Tracks all four ages into one. So this time, when we say Vahe Guru, try to think about Vahe. Just let's try this time thinking of all the four ages. Now, effectively, our soul has been around for four ages. Yeah? Because we didn't make it in Satyu, Otrita, Dwapur. Now we're in Kalyu. And this is the age for us to make it if we can. Yeah? So we've been around for a long time. And it says in Gurbani, Bhat Janam Ke Vichte Te Madho. I'll be separated from you for so many ages, so many lives. This life I dedicate to you. Yeah? So imagine now, Gunanda Eji gives a mantra which covers all four ages. As long as humanity has been around. And this Vahe Guru Mantra is the one that he's given us. And we're going to say it slowly and try to imagine how long it's been around for. And then how it works perfectly for those four ages as well. So we just do it slowly so that. Wahe Guru Wahe
Then Radha came from Ramji, who gave the mantra of Ram. And then Gunadini gave Govind the Govind. And then putting them all together, we got the Vahiguru mantra. Then, by Gunadini so meditating upon this mantra, we can do our homing. Now, another thing is that, obviously, you want to give this is a name, yeah? Satya Naam. This experience of the Naam, this name, is the way to connect to the one. So, what we're saying is that calling Vaheguru is one way of saying Vaheguru. So, imagine like a child calls his mummy. Yeah, my, you know, my, my little ones are always up the top of the stage when they wake up, or they get scared or whatever, they go, Mummy, Mummy, Mummy. They keep saying it until they get an answer, right? And it says in Gurbani that call Vaheguru. Again, call and call and call and call and call upon my God. Call your true love, call your beloved. So we make it, instead of a mantra, we make it into a name. So the mantra is repeating it, but it's now a name. We're just saying it again and again, like you would say a name. With no thoughts of anything else, just calling someone, your beloved. And it says in Gurbani, Tu Tu Karta Tu Hua. Which means, Tu is the word for you. As I said, you and a you and a you, I became you. And nothing of me remained in me. That's the line of what it means. So this time we're just going to say why you like we would call someone. With nothing else attached. So it's just simple. I say it back to you, you say it back to me. It says, Wahi Guru. By calling someone, so we say, Wahi Guru. 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 Here or here, 
But the point is, is that this simran and the experience of it is kind of like the way to the one. Because it's real, it happens within us. The final way of saying why guru is kind of like with the breath. Because Mara says that the, when the body cave was created, then why guru blew breath into it. With that breath, we started breathing. The Vajra Pavan Vijaya. This is the end of an end of uh, an um, It says, Harji Yogu Pa Andara Ke Vajra Pavan Vijaya Vijaya Vajra Pon No Dwari Pargat Kiye Daswa Kupta Pai. This Vai Guru made the cave and inside that blew the breath. And they've started the, the, the Vajra, you know, this uh, Vajra, the harmonium here, yeah? like a Vajra. So, and then, no Dwari, nine doors were kept visible, were visible, the tent was kept hidden. This right on the other side, Guru Ramadas, he gives that teaching. And what he said is, Guru Dwari Lai Pavani, some people come to Guru's door with love and they get shown the tent door. So we say Guru Prasad, see the Guru, the way to Guru is through love. So the only way to God is through love. Even if you look at Harimandra Sahib, the Golden Temple, there's four entrances open to everybody, but the only way is one path. And that's through love. So Guru serves as the person that we can love. It's hard to love why Guru because we don't know why Guru. We can love Guru because of what they did and how they lived their lives. They serve as an example for us to love. And as we love Guru, they open the Sandwar for us for to connect to the one inside. So that's why Guru is also quite important in that way. He serves as our archetype, our lover. You know, the person we give ourselves to. So the last way of saying why guru is, is in line with this idea that the breath of why guru was put into you and it made us go. And it's basically making why guru part of your breath. And one of the things that Bhai Gurdasi says, I'm going a little bit over, you know the, the slok Bhavan Guru Pani Pita? Yeah? Now we've translated that normally as to make the air is the guru and the water is the father and the mother is the earth. What Bhai Gurdasi says there, he gives a different translation of it. He says, Pawn Guru, Guru Shabad hai. That the Pawn Guru is the Guru Shabad. And what is the Guru Shabad? It's the Guru's word. It's, it's Wahi Guru, Guru Shabad Sanaya. Wahi Guru is the Guru Shabad. So in fact, you could say that the Guru, upon our breath, the Pavan being no longer air, but being translated as our Pran, the air that went into us, our a pranic energy, our breath. If we make the breath marry the Guru, becomes Pawn Guru, becomes Wahi Guru, Wahi Guru, every breath. But he says that is the way to do it. Born Guru, with every breath say Wai Guru. Born Guru Guru Shabad Hai, Wai Guru Guru Shabad Sanayan. We'll talk about this tomorrow in more detail about Chapti Sai. But this is what he says. So one way of saying Wai Guru is by, by saying... So we just try to do that for a little while. With the breath in, we'll say Wahi. We breathe in Wahi and breathe out Guru. Wahi, Guru. So we'll just do it together because it's going to hard. But this day slowly, yeah? So you say... You see, we're in a class right now, so we have to go through but we could go on, go on for a while. But you can try doing it by yourself, even if you've got five minutes. So try it's bringing the breath goes into the mouth. It's breath meditation, yeah? It's like There's no one way of doing it. There's three ways of doing the same breath meditation. I'll go through them now. Um, but one of them is in on the Wahi and out on the Guru. Yeah? And you can make, Mara says, you can make your breath part of Wahi Guru. Every breath 
and just go swas swas simran swas is the breath swas swas simran simran we obviously meditation on the one so we can do that and it will become to the point where every breath is saying why guru and it says that when you take it to the highest level obviously I'm not at that level so it's hard for me to say it says every hair on your body will start saying why guru at that point rom rom every link, single hair on your body will start saying why guru it's a hundred thousand million mouths all over your body that we meditate kind of the reason why we don't cut our hair down yeah it's at all you see <laughs> but because um, every part every hair has that power to meditate on why guru but the, the point is that we make it part of our breath. Wan Guru Guru Shabbat Zaman. Wai Guru Guru Shabbat Zaman. We marry our breath to Wai Guru. Now, one of the ways you're saying, the other way is the opposite of that, yeah, which is, so we do that for a little bit because it's quite, it's quite powerful as well. So I'm not saying there's a prescriptive way of saying Wai Guru. The reason I say that is because whatever works with you, go for it. So we'll start doing this way. So. It's powerful because it's really can come part of your breath. And the final way is to do two breaths. And it's kind of it works on the exhale. Yeah? So you're kind of breathing, but you've been breathing between the exhales. So it's like why guru, why guru. This one seems to it emerges with the breath of breath of fire really well. Yeah. You see it straight away, it's very chronic, it comes out from here. It will come out of you. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, there's no right way of saying why guru. To say why guru, after some point, it stops becoming a mantra, it starts becoming a connection, and you start having love with the creator. And the name you use becomes your becomes your marriage. Your name becomes your husband. The name becomes your worship. Everything becomes but the now. That's why when we sing Arti in the evening, you know that Arti Shabbat? Yeah, Gopa. And, and it's our saying, one of the things, um, Naam Teru Arati Majana Murari Harke Naam Bene Chute Sagal Pasari. Without Naam, everything is fake. And ev Naam is the uh, worship. Naam becomes the sandalwood. Naam becomes the candle. Naam becomes the, the diva. Naam becomes the fire. Everything becomes the Naam. No, no, why do, why do? The name of the beloved becomes the worship of the beloved. That's why it becomes Satya Naam. You achieve the truth, the reality, the oneness with the one through the one. And if, just to bring up a line here um, of Satya Naam, you know, um, there was a story once of Gunanta Ji went down south and he was speaking in Sri Lanka because you know he traveled like the second most traveled person in humanity I don't know if you knew that but if you look in the history of mankind Ronald is the second most traveled person in humanity because he went from Tibet, Sri Lanka, Mecca all these places he traveled was recorded he had four big journeys and, and then when he was down south he met this king and the king tried to bribe him with gold and with women it didn't work so he said you know I buy you know, I, goes, I follow you, you honor you to be my guru what can I give you? Guru laughed at him and said, well, what can you give me? 
and he says, all right, I'll give you my kingdom. And Guru says, but the kingdom is not going to stay with me, it's not going to stay with you. You have to pass it on. Even the queen now has to pass on the kingdom, right, to somebody. We celebrate her, but we're worried. When she dies, who's going to be next? Charles, he's a bit of a joker. We wanted to go to William, but we can't get to go to William because the royal succession is that it has to go to Charles. You can't break the rules, otherwise they, what's the monarchy then? Monarchy is hereditary, hereditary line. Can't break the line unless Charles abdicates, right? So he said, "What can you give me? Because I can't. You, you can't give me a kingdom." So I said, "Okay, I can't give you a kingdom. How about I give you everything I own? Forget the kingdom. But every, all everything I own, I become a beggar. I become a pauper and follow you around." He says, "Yeah, but that wealth that you give away, you say is yours. It's not yours either. When you die, it stays behind anyway." So the guy gets perplexed. He says, "Okay, why don't I give up? What can I give you? What can I give you?" Tell me what I should give you. And Guru says, give me this I. <laughs> give me this I you're going on about. Me, me, I, I, I. You want Just give me this I, this homie, this me, 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 me. Give me this I and follow me and I'll teach you how to get to Wyvern. So a sixth journey, effectively, is giving this I to Guru and saying, tell me what you think is right. So when we see the truth and the way that they live their lives, at some point we get convinced that they know what's, what's right and I don't know. Yeah? So when we say a Sikh, Maharaj, you teach me then what's next. And that's, the, and that, that's where the Guru Prasad comes in. So Satya, Naam, and then Satya, Guru Prasad, from the Guru's grace. There's once a story that Guru Gobind Singh said to one of the Sikhs, before I jump on this horse, tell me the entire meaning of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And the Sikhs are perplexed, you know, it's too deep. Whole Guru Granth Sahib Ji. How am I supposed to tell you before you jump on the horse? And one Sikh shouts out, Ikko Ankar Satgur Prasad. And this is for all over Gurbani, you'll find Ikko Ankar Satgur Prasad. This is supposed to be the essence of the whole of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Ikko Ankar Satgur Prasad. That the one made everything, everything came from the one with the sound, and the truth is achieved right, by the Guru's grace. That oneness with the truth is from Guru's grace. Guru can bless us to get that now. Otherwise, we won't be calling him Guru Nanak. We just say Nanak, the holy person. We won't call him Guru or Satguru. So the Sikh accepts the Guru as the embodiment of the light and says, Now teach me. The Guru isn't here just to take you as a Sikh and say, Oh, okay, you're my Sikh now, I'm great, I've got a Sikh. It's the opposite. Guru is here to bless us with the full ability that he has, which is now. Yeah? And that's why. By Lena is the ideal Sikh to follow. By Lena followed Guru Nanak Dev Ji and he became Guru Angad. And now the, the Sikhs follow Guru and when they finally become fully convinced about Guru, they sell themselves to the Guru and say, You have me, I'll become the Panjpiyadi, they gave their head. Isn't it? You see that this continues of the same story. The five beloved ones, they gave their head to the Guru. They played the game of love with their head. And Guru Nanak Dev Ji says in his body, if you want to play the game of love, come with your head in the palm of your hands. Give me this eye. All of, of our, our consciousness of what we are is from this eye, is in our head. And that is what we give to our Guru. <laughs> you see? So the whole thing becomes one story again of giving the eye. And that is through the good mantra. And the Guru says, say this mantra as much as you can. Get up in the morning and do this mantra as much as you can. So the five ways we went through now, that's called the Wahi Guru Mantra, it's called the Guru Mantra. Um, that's like anything that works, follow it. You know, there's no prescriptive way of getting to Waiguru. It's just like a mountain, Waiguru at the top. All we're going to do is climb up that mountain. Whatever works, gets you up there, go for it. Um, and that's the four mantras we've covered now. So we covered the um, Bij Mantra, Ikko Ankar. We covered the Maha Mantra, Dr. Guru Prasad. Yeah, we covered the... Um, the uh, the whole of the Mool Mantra up to Nanak Kosiji such. And the fourth one is the Guru Mantra. And then tomorrow, in the afternoon, we'll go through the Japji Sai. And we, that's called the Mala Mantra. Now, if you know what a Mala is, it's the bead. It's, a, it's like one of those, you know, a, a, a rosary. It's the whole, the string of beads. So, Japji Sai is supposed to be called the Mala Mantra. It says that reading one Japji Sai is like reading one Mala um, of Bach or Simran or whatever. And it's kind of like the essence of the whole of Guru Granth Sahib as well. So we're going to that in more detail. Sorry for taking up a little bit more time.
Um, I hope that was helpful. Everything that I've taught today is really by Guru's grace. So, you know, there's videos online that we've posted that are very similar to this. There's a YouTube channel that we started with Guru's Grace called uh, Basics of Sikhi. But um, please forgive any mistakes I made, anything I said that were wrong. Um, and really, we can just try and listen to Guru Nanak Dev Ji and what he said. You know, we'll be blessed in this one. So, Guru Tika Mahathaniya, why do you think I'm so sorry? Why do you think I'm so Thank you.